in this lecture we are going to discuss about uh, armature reaction in a single reaction already we have studied armature reaction dc generator as well as a motor also. the armature reaction is defined as effect of armature flux on the main flux is nothing but armature reaction so another definition for armature reaction is the effect of armature mms on a main field mms is nothing but armature reaction now we are going to see the armature reaction in synchronous generator this is the stator in which three phase winding is distributed which are dispersed by 120 degrees in phase this is the a phase this is the starting terminal this is the finishing terminal this is the b phase starting terminal and finishing terminal this is the c phase starting terminal and the finishing terminal in this case we are assuming that the current is entering into the finishing terminal and leaving from the starting terminal so this is a rotor this is a rotor winding on this rotor the dc winding is placed for this dc winding we are applying the dc voltage so the dc current is passing through the dc winding the poles are created on the rotor this is an north pole this is south pole the dotted back line is nothing but axis of a field nothing but a, this is a main field whenever we are applying the mechanical input the rotor will be rotating once it is rotating there is a rate of change of flux in case on a stator winding the voltage will be induced in a stator wind that voltage is nothing but a no load voltage or excitation voltage that is represented by the ef the ef is always in phase with the axis of the a phase so actually this is the a phase the axis of a phase is nothing but a perpendicular to the plane of a a dash is nothing but axis of the f f nothing but a main field mms ef is nothing but a the voltage induced by stator wind Excitation voltage that lags this field MMF by 90 degrees. So here this lag vector is nothing but E F. So because of this main field MMF, the flux will be creating that is phi F. That is always in case with a main field MMF. So that's why here we have drawn the one more vector whose length is more than the F F. That is in case with a main field MMF. That we represented here with a F F. All these vectors are rotated anti-clockwise direction with the velocity of omega. Now we are going to see the phasor diagram of armature here. At no load, there is no current is passing through the stator winding, so there is no armature flux. There is no effect of armature flux in this. Now we are going to examine how the armature reaction will be affects the synchronous generator during the unity process. So whenever we connect a resistive load across the stator winding of the synchronous generator, the current is in phase with a excitation voltage or no load voltage. So again, we have taken the axis of the main flux. On the axis of main flux, we have taken the F. This is the axis of phase A. On the axis of phase A, we have taken the E. So because of this E, the current is passing through the stator winding. Whenever we connect a resistive load, the current is nothing but I A. That is in phase with E F because it is a resistive load. So whenever the I A is passing through the stator winding, armature M M F is come to the picture. That is F A. That is in phase with A. I A armature M M F is nothing but a number of turns in a stator winding into current. So F F is in phase with A I A. So we have taken the one more small arrow that is represented by the F A. Now we are going to find out the phasor sum of these two that gives the F R resultant M M F in a synchronous generator. Now we are going to see in terms of flux. So because of F F the main flux will be created. Because of F A armature flux will be created that we represented with a Black one, this one, black arrow that is in phase with a F A. Now if we find the phasor sum of these two, then it gives the resultant flux by R. This is always in phase with a. So when you connect a resistive load across the generator, simply creating a cross magnetization that we can see in the phasor diagram of a synchronous generator. Now we are going to do the zero power factor lag. Zero power factor lagging is nothing but we are assuming that pure inductive load is connected across the synchronous generator. So again we have taken the main field axis. This is the axis of the phase A. On the main field axis, we have taken the F. On the phase A axis, excitation voltage that is E F. So whenever we connect a pure inductive load, the current lags this voltage by 90 degrees. This is I A. So when the current is passing through the stator winding, armature M M F will be created. That is F A. That is shown here. That is in phase with A I A. Now resultant of these two, F A is opposes the main field M M F. So that the resultant MMS becomes a decrease. Now we are going to see the same thing with a fluxes. Because of F A, phi A will be created. This is phi A. Because of the F F, phi F will be created. This is phi F. So this phi A will be opposing the phi F. 
so the resultant flux becomes a higher if we connect a pure inductive load then it gives the remagnetization effect in a synchronous chamber nothing but the overall flux in a generator will be decreased so the excitation voltage or no load voltage are also will be decreased next the zero power factor lead nothing but a pure capacitor if we connect a pure capacitor across the generator the current leads the excitation voltage by 90 degrees Again, we have taken the axis. This is nothing but the axis of the field. This is the axis of the KZA. First, we have taken the axis, nothing but the main field MMS. Next, we have taken the EF, nothing but the voltage induced in a KZA. We have assumed that pure capacitor load is connected. So, the current leads this voltage by 90 degrees. Whenever this current is passing through scatter winding, armature MMS also will be created. That is in phase with the IA. That was shown here parallel to this one. So, the resultant MMF becomes a FR. The resultant MMF will be increased. So, whenever the resultant MMF is increased, the flux also will be increased. Now, we are going to see in terms of a flux. Because of main MMF, main flux is created that is shown here by F. Because of armature MMF, armature flux is created that is by A. So, both in same direction will get added. The resultant flux becomes a so, from this phasor diagram, we can say very easily that if we take a capacitor load across the synchronous generator, the resultant flux will be increased. Lagging power factor. Lagging power factor is nothing but we connect a RL load across the scatter winding of the Now, the angle between the excitation voltage and current becomes a less than the 90 degree. Again, we have taken the main field axis, nest axis of phase A. On the main field, we have taken the FF. On the axis of phase A, we have taken the EF. Now the current lags this voltage by less than the 90 degrees. So here we have taken the IA. When the, this current is passing through scatter winding, FPA is in phase with the IA. Now if you find the phasor sum of these two, FPA and FF, that gives the resultant MMF, that is FR. Now if you want to find out in terms of a flux, phi A is in phase with the FPA, phi F is in phase with the FF. If you find the resultant of these two by means of parallel theorem, we are getting the phi R, that is in phase with the FR. All these phases are rotating in anti clockwise direction. So, what we can observe here means if we connect a RL load across the signal generator, it gives a both demagnetization effect as well as a cross magnetization. So, the resultant flux in the air gap will be disturbed. Not only that, the flux per pole also will be decreasing, which is affecting the excitation voltage, which is in the scatter winding. That is here. See, in this manner, the armature flux is going to affect the main flux based upon the what type of load we have connected across the synchronous generator that is our resistor load, our pure inductive load, our pure capacitor load or RL load. Thank you very much. If you have any doubt, you can ask me directly or you can ask in the comment box of my YouTube channel.